Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. The last few episodes we've been working a lot with architecture and rounding out our network layer, which is definitely crucial to get right. However, I want to revisit the UI today and introduce the famous Airbnb library, Epoxy, if you've never heard of it. If you've watched some of the other seasons on my channel, you know that I am a big fan of Epoxy and it is extremely powerful. So if you're unfamiliar with it, I will link a card in the top right now so that you can go ahead and learn a bit more about it. I don't want to dive too deep into it because I'm expecting that we understand a little bit of how to use Epoxy, but the 30 second crash course is, it is basically an extension of the recycler view with a whole bunch of added features that make our life as developers a little bit easier, namely handling multiple view types very simply. So as you can see here on screen as well, I've been a little bit of a busy bee off camera and just updated the, a little bit of the layout here. I was sick and tired of seeing the header image and it was kind of cut off. So I've gone ahead and updated the layout here to have the app compat image view set to 220 by 220 and wrapped it in a material card view so that we can round the corners, provide a little bit of elevation, and we wound up with this nice looking image in the middle of our screen. And today I want to shift this UI implementation to be done via epoxy. At the moment here when the screen loads, you can see that things kind of fill in place and then the data comes on the screen. Meaning we are not really handling a loading state and definitely not an error state at this point but Epoxy will give us a very simple and easy way to accomplish that. So let's dive right into it. Outside of this little layout changes here, I've gone ahead and added the correct implementation that we need for Epoxy. Gone ahead and also added in this little capped tidbit here and applied the Kotlin capped plugin, all of which are necessary for Epoxy. Gone ahead and also added in the view binding Kotlin model, which we will use for all of our epoxy models in our controllers. And I also just cleaned up some packages here where we now have an epoxy package. We now have a network package that has a response package inside of it. So just did a little bit of house cleaning off camera, but nothing too exciting. And if you're still a little lost with the epoxy stuff, I definitely recommend going out and checking out that video. It is actually my most popular video on the channel and it has been relatively well received. So with that, let's jump right into it and let's go ahead and update our implementation here. So at the moment in the onCreate of our main activity, we simply tell our view model to go ahead and fetch, fetch a particular character and then we listen for the update in our live data. And as you can see here, we have all of our different UI elements being fetched at this moment, and then we reference them when we have successfully gotten data back from the network. However, the major problem with this, or the major bottleneck here, is that it's one-to-one -one with our layout meaning if we wanted to add another section here beneath origin, species, and something else, and have it look the same where this text here is this particular size, and it has the text size of italic, and then underneath it, it has you know the actual data for whatever uh, label we're applying to it, we would need to literally copy and paste these text views, put them beneath one another, set up all the constraints and all that stuff, and then have it appear in our UI. We could also potentially run into an issue of scrolling, where on this device these things are all fit on screen, but it is possible that on a smaller device or an older device, or if we start adding more UI elements, that we would need to support scrolling because we can't fit it all on one screen. Recycler views will allow you to do that, and epoxy is just a better, simpler, faster way to accomplish that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the individual layouts that we need for the sections of our UI, and then we'll dive into the epoxy implementation.
So welcome back. We can see here that the activity main layout file is much, much simpler. And then I've gone ahead and created three different layout files that basically build the different sections of our UI. So if we take a look at this details view here, or this details layout, we've gone ahead and copied what looks like the top part of this UI here. And we've gone ahead and have the image here as well in its own layout file. And then we have a particular item here that is going to denote this section of the UI. We can now use these individual layout files to build this entire UI and even accomplish a much more dynamic UI with the proper data. So let's jump right into it here. This is a class that is going to extend the epoxy controller, which is an Airbnb base class. And then we need to override one function here called build models. We're going to have to change up the data that we're passing in the live data to accomplish the different states that we want, i.e. loading and success. So we'll go ahead and build out those stubs now. We've defined an is loading boolean here, defaulting to true. We're going to go ahead and override the setter of this variable where we will set the field to whatever's passed in. And then if true, we will request model build. So if we tell it that it is loading, we will go ahead and rebuild our UI, which will cause the loading view to be shown. And then we have to find a variable for the character response here, the get character by ID response. We'll initialize it to null. And then again, we are overriding the setter to go ahead and set the field. And then if what we've set that field to is non-null, we will set is loading to false. And then we will request that the models be rebuilt and our UI get updated. Last thing that I forgot is to create a model for our loading state. So we'll very simply just have a constraint layout that takes up the entire size of the parent with a content loading progress bar sitting in the middle of it. We've set it to be indeterminate only, so it will just constantly spin until something changes. Bouncing back to our epoxy model, we can go ahead and start building the logic that will run every time we request a UI update. So we'll simply say, if it is loading, we'll go ahead and show the loading state and return because there's nothing else to do. Otherwise, we will need to add the header model, then we will add the image model, then we will add the data points models to the screen. When we bundle that all up, we will end up getting something that looks exactly like this. So the power of epoxy is that inside of this function here, this build models function, you can go ahead and define a bit of logic that will control what your UI looks like. And then you will also be able to build your UI linearly, meaning that if we have the header model first and then the image model, we will end up with something that looks like this. And if we were to flip them and have the image model first and the header model come after it, then this image here would appear at the top and this right here would appear beneath it. So extremely powerful stuff a much, much, much better way to handle recycler views inside of Android. So let's continue going here. Now we need to define these epoxy models here, and we will do so with the data class. Okay, so let's pause here and talk about it. We've gone ahead and define a data class called header epoxy model. Inside of the constructor, we're going to take the name, gender, and status parameters all as strings. We've passed this information into the constructor here because as we can see in the UI, this information is needed to actually build the interface here. After that, we have our epoxy model data class here extend the view binding Kotlin model. We pass in the particular view binding. In this case, it is the model character details header binding. And then here we go ahead and pass the layout ID of which that we are inflating. The only function to override here is the bind function on this particular view binding instance that we have denoted here in the declaration of this class. We'll go ahead and simply implement this function by saying the name text view dot text equals name and paste it in here. So we are setting the name to be the name that's passed in. We're setting the alive text view to the status. And then we do our little if else check here for male on the gender, otherwise we're going to load the female image asset in. So now we can repeat this process for the other models. And here we have the other epoxy models, the image epoxy model and the data point epoxy model. Again, same structure here where we pass in the necessary information into the constructor. We go ahead and extend our view binding Kotlin model with the corresponding view binding class. Then we pass in our layout file resource ID here and then we override the corresponding bind function and do what we are supposed to do at that moment in time. So here we will add our header model by simply saying header epoxy model. Now this needs the information. We will do so by naming these arguments. Again, we should have our character response at this point 
So we will make it non-null to very easily set the parameters here based on the response that we get from the network. Then we will call dot ID and pass in a particular ID here. This must be unique so that epoxy can work properly with the diffing. So we'll just simply pass in header and then we'll say add to this. And then we can add our image model by following the same pattern. And finally our data points. And here we have implemented that. Go ahead and added some comments back in here. And our epoxy model at this point is complete. But as you can see, it is not being used here. So let's go ahead and change that. Inside of our main activity, we're gonna go ahead and create a class level variable to hold our controller. We'll do so with this line of code here. We no longer need to care about any of these fields. We will simply refresh our character here. Inside of our observer, we will go ahead and update the data that is in our epoxy controller. We'll do so by simply just setting the character response to be what we get. And we can remove all of this. Gonna rearrange some stuff here, but we will tell our view model to refresh the character there. We'll very easily fetch our epoxy recycler view from our layout, and then we will call set controllers and build models with our epoxy controller. One little bit of logic I forgot about inside of our controller is if our character response equals null. And if it does, we will need to do something here like display an error state. Seeing this, we do not have a loading state implemented here. And we can do so by simply adding the loading epoxy model to our epoxy package. And here we basically do nothing other than just create this model here. Bouncing back inside of our is loading block, we will simply just add the loading epoxy model here to the UI as simply as that. All right, let's give it a run. Now the project is rebuilding here, the activity is coming into the foreground. We see our loading state and we see something that more or less resembles our UI. I see one issue here with the little start padding or start margin. So inside of our data point class here, we will just go ahead and say margin start 16 dp. That'll push everything over from the side. And when we go ahead and quickly apply these changes, we can see that our UI looks exactly the way that it did before. So I'm very happy to have this layout updated and, and rebuilt, but now using epoxy. I do just wanna show you one thing really quickly on how easy and simple it is to modify this layout now. So let's say for some reason we didn't actually care about the species. Instead of having to remove the particular views from the layout, we can just very easily comment out adding this particular epoxy model. Go ahead and rerun things and immediately it's gone. This will also work the other way where if we want to add more data models, all we have to do is add them here. Gone ahead and copy and pasted a bunch of the data point epoxy models here, added them to the controller. So we can now see that although they look the same, the idea is there where we can very easily just add more to this layout without having to modify the physical layout, without having to get into the weeds with XML and making sure that the views are there and hiding them and showing them and all that kind of stuff. And as I mentioned before, you can see that this now fully supports having enough information that pushes it past the size of a single screen. So we scroll very nicely and we even get that little over scroll to show that we have reached the bottom of the screen. And there you have it. We've uplifted our UI to have epoxy. We now have a scalable and flexible way to build UIs. And so we will be using this moving forward. If you made it this far and enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you are brand new so you don't miss out on all the content that is to come. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.